Kia ora. welcome to Bust Airs. Beside me here is my trusty little Waco fridge. Now, um, I've had this for, I don't know, at least 10 years. And it's been bloody good. It runs on 12 or 24 volts, plugs into your average cigarette lighter, and uh, it can freeze or chill. Uh, you know, it's like a proper compressor fridge, brilliant. Unfortunately, on the last camping trip, it started freezing everything. Now, um, no expert on fridges and freezers, but at the end of the day, when that happens, the thermostat's probably gone. So I'm going to need to fix it. Now the first hint that something was wrong was I was getting flashing lights across my temperature control. Uh, it's not turned on now, but when it is turned on, I adjust the temperature by pressing this button and um, I get a certain number of lights, up to seven I think, depending on what temperature I set it at. Um, right down to freezing through to kind of keeping fruit cool. Now, I had lights flashing in a row just constantly like this and um, thought that something was up but it did still keep going but now it is freezing constantly on doesn't matter what I said about it it just keeps running the first thing to check is this emergency switch now this little switch here enables you to put it into emergency mode which means it just keeps running it doesn't take any notice of what the battery's doing or anything like that and just runs that's clearly in the off position. So that means I haven't accidentally turned it on to just constantly run. So it's probably the thermostat. Now, thermostat could have simply shorted out, which means that it, um, it thinks it's hot. Uh, it's, it's just a resistor um, that changes resistance as it changes temperature and so if it's shorted out then the fridge thinks it's it's hot and just keeps on trying to cool. Now I could probably take it to an agent. Waco is now called Dometic in New Zealand and um, I'm sure they'd fix it for me for hundreds of bucks. I could buy a genuine part thermistor to, to replace it and um, I'd probably do that for I don't know 30, 40, 50 bucks. Um, but it's just a thermistor, right? Uh, so maybe, maybe it'll cost less than that to fix. First thing I need to do is work out how the hell to pull it apart. So let's have a crack at that. Now here's the layout of the fridge. Um, it's got a cooling, I don't know what that's called, evaporator? Maybe the evaporator. But it's got an area around here that cools the fridge unit down. Um, the fridge itself is this kind of this bucket here. It's got a small shelf here. Now the reason for that is because underneath that is the compressor. So the thermostat, or thermistor as it's perhaps more correctly called, will be somewhere where it can sense how cold this is. So it could be um, somewhere around the side, or it may actually be underneath the base, measuring the temperature of the fridge. So what I'm going to have to do, is I'm probably going to have to take the bottom off. Now, as I mentioned, this, is, this fridge is like 10 years old. So it's probably, as you can see, the screws, well, there's even a screw missing there, but the screws are a bit rusty. This may not go well, but let's find out. In fact, I may start by having a peek under here. Well, first little stumbling block. These screws don't look like they're going to come out. They're kind of rusted in. The tops are stuffed. Without a bit of effort, they're stuck. That may not stop me from fixing this. Let's flip it upside down and see if I can get it through the bottom. 
Look at the state of these rusty screws. Not a good sign. But then I guess they have come out of the bottom of a fridge, which probably gets a bit wet on occasion. These two are worrying me a little bit. They still need to come out. But I've got the compressor cover undone. So that should lift off. Now of course it's wired to the compressor because that's where the power comes in and where the controls are. So for now I'll just put it aside like that. Now the compressor itself, it's got the classic Danfoss compressor. I don't know, maybe I need to turn this upside down. There's some detail there. This is a brilliant little compressor. I could certainly use a vacuum, which I'll do while it's apart. But I can't as yet see where the thermostat is. I had a guess, those two white wires, you might be able to see them there. I'm picking they, they go off to the thermostat. And they seem to have a little plug, sort of what you might expect a thermistor to have on the end. Now bearing in mind this fridge is upside down, um, the compressor is actually mounted on this awesome plastic plate. Uh, really looks well put together it's got its radiator wrapped around it which is where it allows the refrigerant to cool now if you want to know the details of how a refrigerator works you're in the wrong place I'm not so much interested in that what I do need to do though is I need to get this off of here so that I can get at this bit now Looking at it, it's mounted on these steel holes here holding up this side and so they look like they could probably bend. Now there will be a couple of copper pipes going into the fridge which will also bend probably quite nicely but not too far and not too much so I'm just going to try and bend this just far enough away that I can get at the base underneath it. Right here. Whenever I'm doing refrigeration repairs, I like to keep cool with a Harrington's Rogue Hot Pilsner. As fresh as a dip in the WiMac. Just kidding, but seriously, if anyone from Harrington's is watching this, or if you know anyone from Harrington's, get and send me a box, eh? So overnight, I, um, did a bit of thinking about this and I don't really want to pull it all apart. Um, I've seen other people do that and it looks difficult and perhaps even unnecessary. But I do need to fit a new thermostat or a new thermistor. Now looking closer, looking closer at this, um, I'm kind of thinking that that's not the cable to the thermistor at all. Um, I don't know what it is. This strip cable comes up to the control panel and that's pretty much all the cables that come out of here so it's not connected to there. It will be most likely on a little plug just like this but I don't know if that's it. I reckon it's this one here, this yellow one. And it kind of makes sense that it's in a, in a shielded cable, um, just to protect it. So, I have an idea. I'm going to pull it off and see if the fridge runs. If I'm right, well, I could be right or wrong and the fridge won't run. But I'll also check the resistance across it. Okay, so with it disconnected and the fridge powered up, the fridge isn't running. Uh, incidentally, this has next to no resistance across it. So if I simply short out these two terminals, 
the fridge starts up. Now, I happen to have a thermistor. Now this is, um, well it may or may not be the right one, but it's come with a solar charger for checking battery temperature. So I'm going to plug it in. Now it plugs in exactly the same. It's got the exact same plug on it. And when I plug it in, the fridge starts up. Now this is uh, at room temperature of course. Now what if I cool it down? So if I stick this into an ice pack and let it cool down, the fridge shuts down. Now if I warm it back up with my fingers, fridge starts up again. So I can confirm that this is in fact the thermistor plug and that this thermistor is capable of turning the fridge on and off. So what if I just pop it inside and close the door. Okay so I've left this for a while with the new thermistor hooked up um, it's currently not running, hence the orange light in the middle there, and you can hear the compressor's not running. So it's cycled a couple of times and has probably settled. Let's have a look at what's gone on inside. I've simply got the thermistor so sitting kind of in no man's land there. Um, Let's have a look at some temperatures. So the base is sort of one, two degrees. And the sides, which is where all the cooling is coming from, uh, into the negatives, which is not unusual. And it make a good fridge. Now this top shelf, which is always a bit warmer, it's up around 12 degrees at the moment. I've got it on its lowest possible setting. So where it is right now, the unit's probably reading about 6 degrees and turning the fridge off at that point. Which is not bad. I've got it on one of seven. Um, historically, three of seven would be cold, but nothing frozen. Four of seven starts to kind of freeze stuff, and anything above that stuff freezes through to seven of seven, which is everything solid. Now. If I can get 4 degrees in the bottom and about sort of 10, 12 degrees up here on one, I think I think this might work. I just need to find somewhere to put it. Now I'm thinking I'd probably quite like it kind of there. Now why would I put it here? Well, this is where the cold comes into the fridge, right at this very point here. Which means that somewhere there's a tube coming out of the fridge right about here. Now that probably then runs down this side of the side and around to the back which means that there probably isn't anything on this side. So I could drill a hole up the side and come in from that side into here 
with limited chance of hitting anything, then I don't want to break. Right, so what I decided to do was to drill a small hole on the inside of the fridge, just through the plastic, not far enough to get through to the outside of the fridge. Which is around about there. So then I have made another small hole going up on the insulation right on the outside to meet up with that hole and then pulled the cable down through it. Then I've screwed the board back in place and uh, I'm ready to close it up. But I might just give it a quick clean out first. So once I confirm everything's working fine, I'll just put a little bit of silicon around there to seal it and uh, maybe a little more to hold it in place and just protect it a little bit. But it's already waterproof. So let's turn it on. Well that's a good sign. All I need now is to be sure that it turns itself off. Right, so I've used a little wee bit of silicon to hold it down and some tape to hold it in place while it sets. And I'm just going to cover it over with silicon to protect it. And here's the finished result. A uh, new temperature sensor completely encased in silicon. And all of a sudden, the old girl works again. So a little rough, but it works. Now, there's a couple of reasons I got away with such a rough approach. Um, the first is that the thermistor in that fridge um, is a super common thermistor. It's 10 kilowatt in NTC, I think it's called. Really, really common, used in a lot of, a lot of applications. So that also means that a replacement is really cheap. Um, I, I've Put a real cheap one down into the description here uh, if you want a link to uh, something suitable in fact if you're interested in fiddling around with wires and soldering and stuff like that you could probably buy one for just a few cents now the other um, the other reason i've got away with the approach i've taken is that my fridge doesn't have a temperature on it. I mean it has a range, a temperature range using lights, but it doesn't actually tell me what temperature that is. So where um, if you were setting up a, a newer model fridge that actually has the temperature on it, you may need to adjust something like maybe add a little bit of extra resistance or something like that um, just to get it reading the correct temperature. Um, where I've put it turns out must be quite similar um, in terms of the temperature it's experiencing to where it was originally or to where the original uh, thermistor is um, because I'm getting very similar results out of the fridge so uh, I've had it running for a week or so now on three which is my kind of normal fridge setting and it's reacting just like I would expect it to running fairly close to zero but not freezing anything. So like everything, we'll see how it lasts I suppose. Um, but I'm very happy to have my fridge back. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit all the buttons, like and subscribe and all that. Um, and hopefully that means we'll see you again soon. Take care. Matiwa.